And hello folks, welcome back to Minecraft. It's been a little while. Did a little bit of work off camera. So last time, remember, we were working on a drowned farm and a squid farm. Which, uh, those are basically done. I have a couple of things I wanted to add on to the, uh, Round farm. Grab that real quick. So, take a quick look at the squid farm. Pretty much the setup we had for. Just gotta seal off the top here so no one accidentally falls in. But it's pretty much just a grid of the open fence gates and water. Ended up uh, making the area slightly smaller. Just because I, I really don't need that many, uh, you know, ink sacks. Not like a major thing. It's just, you know, a farm I want to have. Have a constant, passive amount of ink sacks coming in. That works great. Nothing else weird spawns there. And over here, we have our ground farm. We have another access point uh, up by the... Above nether portal stairway here. So this is the chamber where the ground will fall down. We have a platform up top which will release water streams all the way down to here. And all of that will be spawnable area for the ground. And then they will see this here egg and fall down the shaft where we can kill them. Doing a bit of damage before they hit the ground, or when they hit the ground, so that we can like one shot them easily. So, the one thing we have not added in quite yet is a mechanism to turn water streams on and off. So, all of the water streams are released by dispensers. You can see underneath here. So we need a switch that will turn that on and off for us. And as, there's a few different ways you can make uh, a redstone signal like vertically. Uh, one I have not used yet is just using a bubble column. Which, if you might know, uh, the bubble column updates an observer. So, what I can do here is actually put a switch down with some soul sand underneath it. Have the soul sand pushed in and out. When the soul sand is pushed underneath the water, it will create a bubble column which will update an observer up top which will send out a signal twice, uh, thus turning on and off the water columns. So first we'll want to get ourselves in there and make some ice. So that's all in position. Put that soul sand back down. Want to pull this off behind us. And I have these, uh, Low stone blocks all here. Or just to uh, prevent any... Well, actually, I'm not sure if they can spawn in bubble columns or not. I, I'm not entirely sure. But, uh, like, half the time this will not be on, and so there won't be a bubble column in it. So, that way we don't have any drowned uh, spawning in this area while the machine is turned off. Old ice farm. Or no, when you need a bunch of ice. The fur it's a fair climb. Gives us a lot of vertical space for the ground to spawn. There's not not that much horizontal area. 
to here. Put ourselves down in Observer. Want to cover this up. I think with regular blocks. And some spawns on top of here. We'll have one last piece of ice in there with an observer leading into it. Oh, wait, no, we'll actually want that to be the other way around. No? Okay. Silly me. Keep forgetting what direction the observers face. Yeah, that's down. Slab up top of that, actually. We'll need to dig down through here. Put this all back to water. We'll just put the slab on top. Head on down. Kind of nice in here. A fair bit of this is actually already melted because of the glowstone. Kind of surprised. Yeah. I'll we'll just put that back in place. A block there. And a lever here. Now that'll create a bubble column. Hopefully. Unless some of the ice didn't actually become a full water block, which would be a pain. Hmm. I don't see a bubble column forming. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Oh, wait. Ah. Water broke the cover. Put that lever on. See how high the bubble column actually goes. Oh. Again, I put the observer the wrong way around. Try that again. Put that into a solid block temporarily. There we go. That's what we wanted. Okay. Actually out of ice, but I have a water bucket. There we go. Cover that back up. Now this is all filling up. One of the sort of unintended byproducts of this is we get a lot of fish. Which, uh, don't really have a use for fish. So I'll probably make a little, uh, to get rid of the dead fish byproduct we get. But for now, it's all just collecting into a chest. I have a bunch of hoppers underneath the main platform here that you can see just underneath slabs. Hmm. One of the problems I ran into was, uh, Apparently, hoppers underneath slabs uh, are don't uh, make it easy for mobs to pathfind. You just kind of end up standing in place. So that's why there is an extra layer of solid blocks underneath that because that fixes their path. That, that fixes their pathfinding. So they should all pathfind towards this egg properly. We 
just sit down here for a moment. We should get a few more to round. Belgian apple. Look at one of those these blocks earlier. Weird that you can't really see the bubble columns. Do the leaf blocks. I might swap those out for glass or something. Get a couple more drowned right now. Make sure they're pathfinding okay. Nobody else up here. That's odd. Check our light levels. Three light levels. Five. Yeah. No light levels. Hey, there's a guy. And this is uh, about 20 blocks from here to the water stream. Sort of like the optimal distance for uh, farms like this. It just takes a little while for the to the spawn them in. I have most of the surrounding area pretty well lit, like even underground. Might some be a little bit of area outside of the perimeter that I have not build in. Let me see if that other ground that path find alright. Why did he spawn? Sure I saw him. Oh well. Oh, well, I just killed this guy. Oh, another fun fact. Uh, without those uh, solid blocks underneath, uh, even the drowned with the tridents can't actually attack, which is interesting. So, so normally if they don't have, like, a, like, for them valid floor for their, uh, for the AI to sort of pathfind towards you. You know, they end up like spinning around. In here they usually just like stand in place and like don't look in your direction, just kind of look in random directions. But uh, it's weird like even with the Trident guys. The fact that they don't actually attack you. Get rid of that. there's these columns in the middle. There should be water, right? Oh, no, there are air gaps. Why is there an air gap? thought I configured the dispensers to all be close in together. Uh, I guess I missed some spots. Might have to redo that later on. Oh, hey, actually swims up. I might have to reconfigure those at the top later on. Poor farmer. Just keep having that bug where the wheat farm, like part of the dispensaries fill up like whenever the area unloads and reloads. The redstone signal isn't consistent. Yeah, let's go ahead and get some music on. More accordion. So additionally today, I should say, off camera, I've made a couple other farms. 
So I finally added in that simple tree farm. Tore down the old massive tree farm that I could not get to work. For some, for whatever reason, the uh, the timing of it just did not line up properly, and would inevitably inevitably break after a short time. But uh, this guy works pretty consistently. A little area underneath where it feeds bone meal in. Fires off bone meal from this dispenser. Basically, just put down sapling. Works best with birch. Uh, this is another ill mango design. Follow the step by step tutorial for. But it's one of those straightforward enough that you do not have to worry about lag ever screwing you over. Just like that. Blows up the tree on site and drops everything down into these dispensers. And I also added in a little cobble farm. This is another Ilmego design, but uh, tutorial by a different guy. Uh, basically, got water and lava in these chambers. And it feeds the stone blocks out this way. And we have a TNT dropper in the middle. Pretty similar design to what we have for the tree. There's like a bigger version of this where it's like just uh, this module over here mirrored on the other side. But uh, generally don't need that much cobble. An interesting side note, uh, when I was building this, I was having trouble getting the, uh, the TNT duplicator to work. There for a while there, the, uh, the cobble, uh, the, uh, the stone generator would continue to push the blocks out underneath. And if the blocks ever get, uh, like, fully underneath the, uh, explosion point, it will actually break the uh, mechanism here. So the TNT will be close enough to destroy this. But it actually feeds out the stone. Like it, it, if, uh, like if the stone is sort of cut off early, and it's just like constantly feeding in the stone, it times out perfectly to where the blast is like right in the middle of here, and it won't damage any components. It won't uh, feed out fa faster. And the TNT can blow it up. So as is, it's working fine. I do occasionally get a mob spawn up there, though. Which is a little bit unfortunate. Now that's what, uh, that's what our iron golems are for. Ideally, they should just all fall down into the water stream and not be a problem. But every once in a while, one gets out. Not that big of a deal, though. Well, basic sorting system here, which is easily expandable. Like, make series of these chests with the water stream on top. But this is this should be plenty of storage for me right now. I don't have that much need of it. I have so much of the regular stone. Like, oh, but I also need cobble for you know, different components and things. Like, oh, I don't want to have to sit there and break apart regular stone into cobblestone. Well, we have a generator for that. Yeah, one thing I did want to do on camera here was currently the uh, tree farm. Actually, I have to feed in the uh, bone meal manually. But as you know, I have a uh, set of composters over here as part of the uh, prop farms. Uh, there. So what I would like to do 
is make a system that automatically feeds the uh, the bone meal over to the tree farm, which for that, uh, actually going to make a dispenser here, which will fire off the excess bone meal into a water stream. Carry that over here. And then drop it all up into a hopper that will feed into this chest. And feed into the system. One of the uh, sort of hurdles we have to get around is that I want the uh, bone meal stream to stop whenever this chest is full. So we don't have like a bunch of items being fired off and wasting bone meal that way. So we are going to have a little system like this. So if you're familiar with redstone, you probably know that uh, a full double chest of items will let off a signal from a comparator it's, uh, 15 blocks long. So the idea is, once this double chest down here is filled up, it's going to let off a redstone signal that will stop the dispenser on the other end from firing off, essentially. I'm probably going to need some more ice though. We'll see how much I have in storage. A little bit. Definitely need more though. Definitely nice finally having the uh, tree farm though that I can just AFK at. Mentioned before, it works best with uh, birch. Get your the best sapling return off of that. Uh, because the other trees can grow in funky ways. Uh, occasionally lose a little bit. Whenever the explosion radius just doesn't uh, line up properly. These saplings away. Run up to our ice farm real quick, get a little bit of extra ice. I should put down slabs or something instead of full blocks here so I don't have to deal with the snow. Considered making changes to the ice farm. There's like a couple ways you can alter it, make it, uh, if cable really doesn't seem all that necessary most of the time. The only reason I would make the ice farm AF cable is uh get some pack dice. But generally I can just uh get pack dice break them down icebergs and such. Let's see. Have my redstone kit. There we are. Probably want to dig this down one more spot. Have a 
ourselves a couple of hoppers. And some observers and stick things. Oh darn. There's still a zombie spawn in there. I didn't think mom. This is just where the items are gonna go through. I need a separate way for the redstone signal. I think it'd probably be simplest. I made the I'm going to want an easy way for the redstone signal to reach the dispenser. But I also don't want the dispenser to have too many hoppers leading into it. Those I can expand to the right a little bit for the redstone signal. Spencer right here, I think. And a hopper leading into that. Adequate. We'll have a redstone signal feed along here. Make a second tunnel. That. So the idea for the dispenser is it's going to have an observer clock. If I can get this facing the right way. So you might know we have two observers facing each other. They uh, constantly send off redstone signals as they're updating each other. So, mechanism for the dispenser. You might need this another block up. I keep forgetting how the redstone signal actually opens. I can feed it in sideways or not. No. Leave the redstone on top. No? Okay. It needs to have the redstone directly into it then. No? Interesting. I figured that would work. So I suppose the easier way to do this would just be have. facing this way. Have the second observer here. Okay, now this should be working. Why isn't this working? I'm confused. 
Why is this not firing off anything? I'm missing something. Oh, it's because it's bone meal. I need a dropper. Duh. Okay. Like, why isn't this firing off? Okay. Because uh, bone meal has the specification that when you dispense it, instead of dropping it, that means it's uh, being applied to the air block rather than just dropping off the block. If I want to drop a piece of bone meal, I actually need to use a dropper. Okay. There we go. So, let's double check if this works. No. It should work if I put the stone here then. Yes, okay. That means we can have our design. Like this. And we'll just have a big piston up. And observer facing that way. Stone signal. Signal feed along to here. Sort of stair step. Signal down a little bit. And grab a character. Observers. Ourselves and compared to coming up this guy. That's our 15 on redstone. After that, we'll just have a couple of repeaters. Let's extend the signal to that length. Demonstrate. That's how that'll work. We will need blocks on the side just to keep the thumbnail going out. With this fence there, with this uh, hard off area. Fair point.
but uh, we will not want a block here. Then it's the solid block would transfer the redstone signal. You'll need something that doesn't. Which is glass. Or a leaf block. I prefer to use leaf blocks where possible. Okay, apparently that transfers the signal. You think that one would work? Okay, so it'll have to be glass blocks then. I still need to prevent the bone meal from being launched into that little block area. No? That definitely should not be happening. Huh. Interesting. Not sure why that would work. I mean, on the one hand, this is powering. Oh, okay, I get it now. So what's happening is, uh, when the compare when the observer goes down, it's powering the redstone behind it. But I guess it doesn't send out a redstone signal when it observes glass. Oh, when it observes uh, an air block. I thought it did. I, I thought it still sent out a signal when it observed it. But I guess not. That makes sense. That's why we don't want a block there. Just need to cover up this space. Does this still work? Yes, okay. That's a little bit better so we don't have a block there that I could accidentally launch stuff into. Just have to put down a water stream here. That's one thing that always confuses me. Is sometimes you can break an ice block and have it turn into a water source. Other times, it doesn't work. Seems like if the ice block is already touching water, then it will turn into a source block. 
or if it's melted by the light, then it can turn into its source block. You can't always just break it. Very really strange. So basically, we're going to need a packed ice block here. stone slab above it. Another water source here. And every seven blocks we'll do some deviation again. Actually, I don't think for that time it's going to I think it should be okay if we have just this block. It should still flow properly. Generally, uh, want to have the uh, conversion from one water stream to the next, like one block shorter, about than like the full uh, length of the water stream. Just because that ensures that the items are going at higher speed than they go underneath here. As if they go too slow. Well, yeah. If they reach the end of this, it will reduce their speed. So they might not make it underneath. Give me that. Next, pack the ice. That your eyes. That should be fine. And then we are going to want to have a bubble column. Now I think about it, I'll have to feed the redstone around a little bit. Probably also means we'll have to move the repeater. So we're gonna have a hopper here. Blocks on the side of that. We'll use blocks so we can see through. Means that Peter will need to be one spot close to the We'll check that. Oh, 
Water stream being like that should prevent any uh meal falling into that little corner there. Well, I suppose to prevent that I could just put a repeater here. Uh think about it. Prevents the redstone signal from going backwards. Alright, so next we just need to make the bubble calm. We need some soul sand. Very pleased with how the base has turned out. Feels comfy. Feels like a place of business. Let's see. Let me put away some of my inventory here. Could be done with all the redstone components, though. So we should be good, actually, because we'll want another. Full blockade here. Back ice and stone slab. And we'll put the bomb here. Go ourselves off. One block higher. I'm gonna need this one to melt. Love the web of things. Having all these machines right next to each other. Wait, those are packed ice in it. God damn it. <laughs> Waiting for this to melt, it will never melt. Try that again. There we go. Need to reseal this. I believe it's best to have air gap above. I'm not certain about that though. That for stone. That's better. We'll see how it does without an air gap. Alright, there is one silly thing I forgot. Uh, we'll actually need a redstone torch here. The idea will be uh, because it's empty now, it's not sending up signal, so it will activate the redstone torch. But when it is full, 
Then it will stop firing off. Wrong meal. Seems that we are still having some issues. Wrong meal coming out of place. What can we do about that? Well, I suppose we can just leave this water source down lower. Put a little blockade here. There. Now that'll all feed on down into our chest. here for me so I don't accidentally put that stuff up. Then we just need to make a hopper line feeding into here. I'm picking up a bit of that accidentally. and take some of this out into our chest. Clean up my inventory a little bit. Uh, it's funny having just like old spare chests from different projects laying around just for excess storage. Goodness knows there's a lot of excess. I never like just deleting objects unless I'm sure I don't need them. Never know when you need it on of a particular object. Help this guy along. Grab our redstone. so I don't accidentally pick stuff up again. There's our little count. Zombie conversion chamber. Definitely prefer, prefer it this way rather than the way I have it there. If I convert the villagers individually, that can make them nice and compact. 
having the bolt and space part to go between them. Ugh. Have a double composter set up here. Feeds down into this chest. For the longest time, this was just blocked up with items. Suppose I don't need this anymore. It's a bunch of stone and dirt. Oh. Like the hopper isn't picking them up fast enough. That is a problem. Suppose a second hopper would do the trick. That's gonna destroy it now that's done. I could have a second hopper on the side of the chest, possibly. A little hard how close it is. I got off to seal off the sides of this as well. Just the position of the chest. to mess around the positions of this. There is a little bit of O'Neill underneath that slab. And that's not a normal thing. Ideally, I just want a second uh, hopper feeding into the chest. Right now, I can't keep up with the speed that the bone meal is being launched out from the dispenser. I will want some leaf blocks on the outside of that. If I stop picking these up. And just because I didn't show this off earlier, there's the cobble machine at work. Always scary with the server lag. Can't always see the EMT fall into place. It kind of disappears, and then there's an explosion.
That just turns the clock on and off. Oh, I think we're done with this for now. I'll mess around with the configuration, see if I can fit another hopper in there. But for now, I have another aesthetic project I want to work on. Suppose we don't need the ground farm on either. Suppose we've been out of range of it for a while now. There should be any ground coming down. I could hear one. We get a fair amount of fish off this stuff. Yeah. Like they're still having some pathfinding issues. That's disappointing. I suppose I'll have to swap out this slab for or just a uh, upper mine cart underneath the hoppers. When I swapped this out before, didn't have any issues with the uh, pathfinding. Now they're having pathfinding problems again. Oh well. So yeah, I'll just swap that out for a hopper minecart. I, I didn't really want to use a hopper minecart. Just because that, uh, kind of an awkward shape to minecart into. But oh well. I'll change that off camera. But yeah, as I mentioned earlier, I have an aesthetic project that I want to work on. Let's start on our next house. Which I kind of want to do sort of a redstone theme. You know. I have a house. A bunch of piston doors and fancy things like that. I suppose I haven't set up the wall for this yet. Just have this dirt here to sort of go where I want the wall to be placed. We have some spare brick in there, right? A little bit. We're gonna need more though. Plenty of iron bars around. There's my brick. Let's get the basic foundation down for this guy. I'm not sure if I'm gonna get rid of these trees. I kind of like these trees. I will want a back wall, but wait to add that in. So we do the houses themselves. You know, they might have a custom balcony. Like the big white fancy house has. Overlook. We do this spot right here so there's a nice little entryway.
I'm feeling some brick stairs right here. I would tear down this tree though. Kind of in the way. I miss having creative flying. It's one thing. Just like for aesthetic projects, it's so much easier to be able to work on stuff. Like this fucking yarn ball would have been so much easier if I could just fly around it instead of having to put up scaffolding. Well. I want the entrance for this. I'm thinking just like a little stairway here. Probably won't do a full wall. Gotta go out to about here. Down. Captain Google. Give it a nice, just awkward entrance. Side of the hill here. Or, I'm kind of feeling just like a brick walkway. That was weird. I haven't seen that before. Bricks upside down. I wonder. One thing I wish I could. Why is it doing that? Wait. I'm gonna block that. Why? I wish I could get like these corner blocks. Consistently. That'll do. Couple more stairs. If I delete that, then it'll become a straight story again. Something like this would be fine.
That should do, I suppose. Actually, I should have some spare lamps here, right? As for the entryway, just a little bit of a front garden here. Mainly want to build out of iron, maybe a bit of gold trim here and there. And the main idea is to have something that's redstone centric. Plus for now, we'll just cut off right here. I like the slightly rounded shape we're going for. For the interior flooring, really liked uh, this design I've seen before. People use just crisscrossing pistons. If I understand correctly, I don't think mobs actually spawn on pistons. I'd be wrong about that, though. I suppose since the main doorway will have a uh, mechanism to it, probably don't want pistons. But. But 
other pistons touching that. A couple of different patterns we can go for. Set these, I think. It's facing the right way. Something along those lines. Add each segment slightly off from the last. Of course. Forgot about you guys. Always forget about you guys. Take a quick nap in the yarn house. Oh! That would be mess up the garden. The fun interior. So cute. Sudden creepy noise. Alright. Up here. There we go. Give me that floor pattern. Those are a couple of the patterns we could go for. More like star shape. See how that looks. a bit class here. All right, we'll go for that instead. I wish there was like a tool that made breaking pistons faster. It's always really weird to me that the pick breaks pistons at the same speed. I guess they're supposed to be like a combination of wood and optical. Still.
Right. Do those. Turns down. As he's taking so long to die. Got on her a piece of shade. And clearly I fucked it up somewhere along the line. Wrong pattern. Not aligned properly. A little bit easier to have a guide like this. Go down clockwise.
So, understandably, most of the uh, servers didn't play too much anymore. Okay. Mainly just waiting for 1.16 to come out, I think. Stuff to play around with. Not sure if Mr. Silverfish ever finished up getting all the achievements. Still has that area set up at spawn. Got himself a dolphin caught under there and got it the uh What are you calling? Guys from the N cities. Shulker. We got the Shulker sitting over there. Mechanism to fire potions at him. Didn't see an Elder Guardian though, so I imagine that uh, probably the hold up. But that's a very difficult thing to transport. I think the machines I have here, farms, probably all the ones I'm gonna make until 1.16 comes out. Not too many more that would really be worthwhile to me. Suppose I still haven't done the Guardian farm and but it it's, yeah. And initially when I came on the server I really wanted to make a uh dolphin highway. You make a farm for dolphins. Not sure how much I want to do that anymore. Like, uh, on the one hand, it's a really cool concept, but on the other, I really don't need Dolphin Highway as a method of travel. Capes are so much more convenient. At most, I would make a pathway from my place to other people's places. I would still like to make a blue ice highway in the nether, though. Just because of how spread out Some of the locations are. Mainly that uh, ice biome. Kind of a huge pain to get to and from. I would be more motivated to make such a highway if the other people were on more regularly. That is not the case. Sticky pistons, lock down. A lot easier to make sideways doors when they're not using regular doors. You know, sideways door if it's using pistons. It's a lot nicer. I like this pattern though. Pretty nice. Hey, Dryadon. I'm doing pretty good. How are you? Working on another house for the area. My inventory a little bit. So, for this, I did have 
fun concept they want to do for the roof. Or for the ceiling, rather. Now I'll make the bottom level of this into note blocks as a trim. I think that looks nice. Probably make some kind of a uh, musical doorway, something to that effect, or doorbell. I would like to have a uh, piston-based elevator for this place. Probably have to look at different uh, styles of elevator though. One that's nice and compact. So I'm thinking maybe a five block high ceiling for this. some more iron. I think I'll make that corner into a big old window, though. Nice view. The other houses. I'll go make a six tall, I think. Pretty bored, eh? Hmm. Nope, I don't control the whitelist. So. Just me at the moment. Ah. I believe Xbox just has, uh. What you call it? Bedrock Edition. If I recall. Uh, this is Java, which the two don't mix. I think. The thing for the first floor is going to be quite thick. The second floor is going to be fairly high up. The basic concept. Because they found out that the observers will actually spot um, when redstone ore lights up. And so, what I can do is have a ceiling of lanterns. With observers leading into redstone. 
And that will cause the lanterns to randomly light up on the ceiling. I think would look quite nice. It sense if I want this a little bit higher or not. Maybe two blocks higher, I think, would look best. Seems like every build I make I end up making it taller. Taller oh, looks better. I don't like short, stubby houses. I see this would be a good. I'm gonna start on. I will actually make the redstone layer first. For the lanterns, we can do this. Observers. And this will be let's go. Go up this area. If we begin, need some more iron blocks. I might mess around with some of the building materials, though. Like this, they have sort of a steampunkish kind of feel. But... Nice having use for all the ores that have accumulated. Been collecting ores for some time now. Figured I'd use them aesthetically in a project. It was the first one. Just uses redstone ore so far, though. I might mix in the other ores. But redstone ore is just particularly useful because of the fact that it sends out a redstone signal. Also, I like the fact you know it will occasionally glow. But from here, we're gonna want to make a little ore. Grab some more iron blocks. Looks like mobs do spawn on pistons. Oh well. Afraid of that. Make ourselves a little platform in the sander here. Build. Be fine. Do 
trees. No, no. And I have to, have to be a little bit further unmoved. Probably. Now these all downward facing. I do have particles turned down to the minimum. Can't always see when the redstone actually lights up. I need some more observers though. Got more on the redstone chest. Okay. Then we just need some lanterns. They have enough of those. I'm not sure. What the, uh, I guess, sort of coating is the redstone ore. How frequently send off signals. It's like every so often, ceiling to light up in there. I just hope you don't have to be like a particular distance from the redstone in order to get it to light up. One of those. Got a few more lanterns about. Should be enough. Thank you. 
one thing I should do before I build stuff like in the future. Check what scary noises like pop up. Just sort of like that wind whoosh go by. Because for whatever reason, the sound effects seem to be locational. Like, every time you go uh, by James's tree, you'll hear it makes that, like, minecart sound. Every time I go in here, I should get that oosh. I'm interested to see if we sit down here if this is too far away that the lanterns won't light up. I want to see a couple random flickers. Oh, there we go. Not quite as frequent as I would like. But just a, you know, a couple flickers here and there. The fun effect. So it's a nice tall window here. some gold trim in places. I think I'll make the window go right up to the top block. Trying to picture what kind of trim I want to do in this. Want to do gold blocks along the top. Maybe grab some glass. I'm not sure if I want to do colored glass or not. Be fun to have a stained window. It's like alternating colors. But I think I still have my glass box here. in a bit of gold trim along the edges and on the up floor best. A drink, please. Right out, look. down a gold trim around the window. Let's see. 
Oh. Build out a bit. Might change the trim later on. The general shape they want to go for, though. Be done with all these screws and such. Goes away. Keep the spider eyes. Yeah, the gold is a little bit gaudy. I might do like, uh, oh, maybe a terracotta. Something like that. Mess around with materials later. Just want to get the basic shape. Floor of the window. Blocks, color mixture we want to go for. And darker colors. Okay. We'll do a combination of these. Yeah, that, that'll look good. So it's five blocks wide. There's I don't think I want to do like a sequence. I would like them to be different in each placement. Gotta make a nice random.
quick look. Ah, uh, the yell's a bit much. Uh, I could put black in there. They can look best. Not as randomized as it. I had another color in there. I think that would even it out. In pretty happy to see you. That looks I'll be blown there. Yeah, gold trim's definitely too much. At the window, though. I think I'll have it go up one more block. I'm trying to decide if I want the elevator against the back wall here, if I want it like... Those right here would be best. Access it a little bit quicker. Uh, 
the elevator in the corner. Have another main window somewhere. Think what other materials would look nice. I could do something more stone. Um, I don't think I've used hoppers aesthetically. I don't think they work too aesthetically. I could build like handfuls and stuff. I could look more of a steampunk feel. Room will fix the inspiration of this. I wish there was like another, uh, maybe like a couple more like chiseled stone like patterns. I guess we could mix a wood type in there. Think about it. Really hate how like the stripped wood adds in like a green. Kind of feeling the stripped dark oak though. That could work as a trim. Might swap out the iron too. Not sure how much dark oak I have in storage. I had a ton at one point. I have a bit. I don't think there's a good machine do for ripping wood. We just end up making the lines. Like this. It's not like pumpkins where you can have a machine that auto breaks them. I would need like a TNT setup. See how that looks. Not sure if you can. Okay, yeah, you can make them without the uh, one side going. Looks. I 
I think it'd look better with the, uh, the note blocks there. I want to send those a bit better. I think I might add in a chandelier or something. Just because the ceiling doesn't quite light up as often as I would like. Nicer. Definitely gonna do something with the iron though. I find a nice gray block that looks good. I would really like to use uh, Dead Coral for some build. I'm not sure how that, that would look in place. Something with sort of a cobble feel, I think. Yeah, you know, a bit more like the pistons. I think I'm gonna need to strip a few more logs, which is off. down a little bit.
I'm happy with that as a basis. And swap out the iron for something more, a little bit darker gray. Maybe some stone patterns or a get coral or something like that. Maybe a combination. That would look nice. Stained glass window. Move a couple of color around, colors around. A bit more of a random feel. So off camera, I'll probably figure out a good elevator setup. Probably have it right here. Then work on the piston doorway. Might have to extend this out a little bit now that I think about it. To have the piston work as intended. Not a good setup for that. It's nice, not too thick. Might reshape a little bit of the ground here. Uh, I kind of like this rounded shape that the hill has. Probably flatten out the top a little bit, give them a proper yard. You know what I'll do for the second floor though? I haven't really got that far. Mostly the floor and the ceiling are the main concepts I want to make with this. Occasional flicker. Which, uh, one of the fun things with that is actually, if we leave it as a redstone floor like this, then whenever someone's up here, it'll light up a lot more. Like, uh, let's see, where is it? Grab my bucket real quick. One of the fun things. With the redstone, uh, or you right click on it with a bucket, it won't actually pour the water down. However, it will activate the ore. So, yeah. Someone's upstairs, that'll set it off. That's pretty. That's more like what I wanted this to do. I'll have to play around and see if there's a way I can get the redstone ore to activate remotely. I would love to have it just flicker on and off like that randomly. Not really a good redstone configuration to get that kind of randomness. So now that I think about it, I could do a setup with like uh, name tagged bats and pressure plates, but that wouldn't look as random. Like if I just had like pressure plates on top of these and then a bat like flying around. Activating them. We just kind of make a line of the lights going on and off. I'll play around with that, see if I can figure out another redstone configuration. Because I, I really like this, just having the lights actually go on and off looks nice. Now this might be a good situation to add in 
that uh, pufferfish redstone concept. Which we've discussed previously. For like a once you get within a certain range of a pufferfish, it uh, it like expands, which you can use that while it's in a minecart. Activate a pressure plate. So I can have like pressure plateless uh, redstone system or a doorway. You know, I just get a certain distance from it, then it opens and closes. It'd be pretty rad. It's nice that that's kept going for so long. When we were standing here earlier, it was pretty much not doing anything. Seems like once you like uh, activate it a couple times, it really gets it going. Oh dang! Okay, there we go. But I couldn't pick it up for a second there. I didn't mess up too much. The lighting. Go over the grass. Fortunately, a lot of this is lit by the glowstone. Which There, that's lighting up pretty. But yeah. I think I'll mess around with the materials a little bit off camera. Figure out the door, figure out a good elevator system, and we'll pick that up next time. I think the next house I'll do will probably be ice spike themed. So, I might want to save that for a different area. A bit further down the road. Also need to make the diner still. And to do like nice 50s, 40s style diner on the edge here. And I'd like to go through this uh, little back river area and then nice little sort of garden. Oh yeah. A couple more projects we have left to do before 1.16 comes out. At any rate, I think I'll call it here. Nice two and a half hours. Yeah. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And I will see you next time. Have a good night.